안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And welcome to my review of the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. As you know, when Apple announced the new M1 MacBooks, I didn't immediately buy one because I'd always like to wait and see if there is a problem with the new version of anything. And I also wanted to wait and see if something more powerful showed up later. And I am very, very happy I waited because this thing is an absolute beast. I've been using this for more than six months now and I want to share with you the good parts, the bad parts and who do I think should buy this. Starting with the good parts, the speed on this thing is insane. My programs compile two to three times faster compared with the Intel MacBook Pro. This really hit me when I was recording the free React Native course. I was running iOS simulator, Android simulator, VS Code, the browser, and I was also recording my screen, recording the camera and the microphone, all those things combined. Usually, the Intel MacBook Pro had problems with this. It became very warm, the fan became very noisy, and the clicks weren't snappy, it was very laggy. Now, nothing really crashed and nothing really stopped working, but it was laggy, it was just slow. Sometimes they even the video quality dropped. Now, compare that with this thing right here. This, the M1 Max, crazy, insane. I can run the iOS simulator, Android simulator, browser, VS Code, record my camera, record my screen, record the audio, all those things is like, if it wasn't doing any work at all. I can barely hear the fan, it doesn't get warm, it's crazy. It, the clicks are still snappy, the video quality is great, it's unbelievable how good this thing is. The thing that impressed me the most and the thing that I love the most about this laptop isn't actually the speed, because we all knew that M1 was faster than Intel. Now the thing that I really, really didn't expect, but I absolutely love, is the battery life. It lasts so long, it's crazy. When I'm doing any programming related tasks, it can last for the whole day, not even going down to the 70%. It's crazy. There was a day when I first noticed this, when I didn't wanna work on my desk and instead I wanna work on my sofa. So I charged the laptop 100% and went and worked on the sofa. For the whole day, at least six to seven hours, I was doing Docker, I was running VS Code, I was compiling some stuff, I was also running the browser, watching some video, some video playback, and I was running some Electron applications that as we know, Electron takes a lot of memory and battery, like for example, Slack and maybe Figma or Spotify. Now, after six, seven hours of this, I looked at the battery and I see that it was in the high 60%, almost 70 something percent. And that was after six, seven or even eight hours of work. It didn't drop that much. I was so, so surprised. If that was my Intel MacBook Pro, I am sure the battery wouldn't have lasted that much or at least it would be in the low 20s or the low 10%. Now, of course, we could say that this is because the battery as well is new, and this is true. The Intel MacBook Pro doesn't have a new battery, so that's also something to consider. But still, I can really feel how having the M1 Max chip is better for Apple because now they can optimize so much that they require less power. It's insane. On to the bad parts now. I don't really have anything bad to say about the hardware of this laptop is good quality, Apple builds good quality stuff. But what I have to say is that I found some software crashing a lot sometimes. Um, yeah, just crashed in the M1, just things just crashed. It crashed more often than on the Intel MacBook Pro. But I have to say that it is getting better. These are just bugs and developers are going to fix the bugs as the time passes. Uh, for example, when I started using this the first time, for I think two weeks, Brave Browser crashed at least once a day. It was really, really annoying. Of course, it wasn't happening on the Intel. It was something very specific to the M1. But now it's fine. So it's just as time passes, things just get better with tech. What really annoyed me was how long it took me to get like my dev setup ready. Like, in the Intel, it didn't take me that long to get my compilers, my simulators, my virtual machines ready. In the M1 MacBook Pro, it took me longer. Some things like some Python stuff, it wasn't able to be installed. It just wouldn't work. So I had to use Docker for that. It was kind of annoying, but it's not a big deal. And again, it might get better with time as people port their libraries and their software to the M1 chips. Another cool thing about this laptop is of course, how many ports it has. It doesn't have a useless touch bar and the keyboard is really, really good. But this is not something to celebrate. This should be the minimum requirement for a laptop with this price tag. 
The reason why I'm happy about all the ports and the keyboard and everything is because I had to buy the 2016 Intel MacBook Pro, which was garbage, personally. It didn't have ports, the keyboard was really bad, it had a really useless touch bar. So now I'm glad we went back to the bare minimum. So I'm not gonna celebrate that, I'm not gonna compliment Apple on that, it's not innovation, it's the bare minimum for something with this price tag. So now the last question is, who do I think should buy this machine? Who is the target audience for this? And I personally think that developers are not the target audience for this machine. This is way too powerful. I think this is going to shine in the hands of an architect that has to do 3D renders or maybe, maybe a developer working with Unreal Engine, having to load very heavy 3D scenes, maybe somebody doing a lot of graphic design with Blender or I don't know, some really heavy graphic stuff. I don't think that developers need all this power. Maybe the battery life, it's amazing. That is for sure. But it's very expensive and the power is not something that developers can really harness in a way. I think if we're just doing programming tasks like writing code, compiling stuff, installing some packages, browsing the web, and watching videos, I don't really think we need something like this. Personally, personally, if I didn't make courses, if I didn't render videos and edit videos and do all those things, I don't think I would have bought this or at least I wouldn't have maxed it out as much as I did. But that's just what I think. If you have the money and you wanna splash on something like this, then of course, go ahead. It is a good machine. It is incredibly fast and the battery is amazing. And also, if you are curious and you want to check out the courses that I recorded on this machine and on the Intel machine, then please click the link below because there you will find free courses on JavaScript, Python, Go, React, React Native, Redux, GraphQL, Apollo, Nest.js, Next.js, among many other things. Thank you, as always, for watching. Let me know what you think about my review. This is the first time I do any sort of tech review in this channel, so I apologize if it's not what you were expecting. I don't know how to do reviews and I don't watch review channels, so this is as good as it gets. Let me know in the comments also if you purchased one of these. Are you happy with it? Are you going to take it back? What do you think about the other ones? Did you buy the M2? Should we buy the M2? Because I've seen some people having problems with it. Let me know in the comments. I'm going to be looking at them right now. As always, stay free, stay happy. Eat kimchi. Kamsamnida. Sanheyo. Bye-bye.